So today, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Merkel cell carcinoma. Um, by no means uh, anywhere near as common as the carcinomas you've already heard about, or melanoma for that matter. But we uh, pay attention to it because it has the propensity to be to behave aggressively. So uh, I thought this would be a great opportunity to discuss a little bit about what we know about Merkel cell carcinoma, some key characteristics, uh, and uh, what you can do. So what is Merkel cell carcinoma? Well, partially as a function of its uh, r rarity, uh, it's not often diagnosed or sus suspected clinically when, when you first look at it. So certainly the picture on the left looks like maybe a vascular lesion, a hemangioma, or maybe even a basal cell carcinoma. Uh, and of course, um, this disease, as I said, can be aggressive at times. This is actually the leg of someone with uh, Merkel cell carcinoma. You can see these multiple nodules and cyst cystic-like uh, lesions. Um, and so when I said rare, um, what I meant was about 3,000 new diagnoses a year uh, in, the, in the United States. Uh, and so right now, the numbers are about between 2,500 and 3,000, expected to increase dramatically over the next several decades, again, like melanoma and the other, uh, and the keratinocyte carcinomas that you heard about uh, earlier. Um, uh, this is diagnosed uh, significantly more frequently in men than in women uh, by an almost two to one ratio. And it is overwhelmingly a disease of older individuals. So 90% of cases occur in uh, individuals over the age of 50, and this uh, incidence increases well into the 90s. Um, additional uh, risk factors, if you will, or uh, patient characteristics that are associated with development of Merkel cell carcinoma are uh, fair-skinned individuals uh, and immunosuppression, as was mentioned earlier, particularly for squamous cell carcinoma, is a major risk factor. So some of the clinical features that, that I was starting to, to uh, show you with the pictures, um, it's often asymptomatic. Uh, people don't often complain that it's uh, itchy or, or um, painful. Um, uh, oftentimes it's reported that these lesions are expanding again, uh, occurring in the context of immunosuppression is a risk factor and uh, in older individuals. And uh, in a significant uh, uh, subset of patients, um, these lesions tend to occur in UV exposed, sun exposed areas. And again, over 90% um, of Merkel cell carcinomas are diagnosed in uh, white individuals. So obviously uh, people who are, uh, uh, fair skinned. Um, so I will move on to what causes Merkel cell carcinoma. So this is actually one of the most interesting, um, uh, biologically speaking, one of the most interesting uh, skin cancers. So it turns out there are two varieties of Merkel cell carcinoma. The majority of Merkel cell carcinomas are due to Merkel cell polyoma virus. This is considered a commensal virus. You find it in babies. Uh, and um, People who get Merkel cell carcinoma as a result of having this virus um, have sort of two unlucky events. The first is the virus itself has to mutate, uh, be damaged in some way, perhaps, uh, and it has to find a way to integrate itself into the genome of a normal cell in the skin. Uh, it's still unclear as yet what that cell type is, um, but... Um, in any case, the integration of that Merkel cell polyoma virus results in the elaboration of uh, key viral oncoproteins, which are enough in and of themselves to drive the formation of a cancer. A minority of the cases, probably about 40%, 30% of cases, uh, are due to same risk factors that drive the development of the uh, keratinocyte uh, carcinomas you heard about earlier. So chronic uh, UV exposure most often from sun, and that uh, uh, lines up with what we know about the molecular changes that result. This is a much more stark illustration of that. This is just to show the number of mutations or DNA changes that occur in the genomes of these cancers when you sequence them. Um, on the left are the ones that are due to chronic UV exposure. So they have thousands and thousands of mutations. 
just like one would observe in basal cell carcinomas, squamous cell carcinomas, and melanomas. And on the right are very, very quiet um, Merkel cell carcinomas, very few mutations. In some cases, we are unable to identify um, mutations within the exome uh, of these um, of these cancers, suggesting that the virus, simply the integration of the virus, expression of those viral oncoproteins is by itself enough to cause uh, cancer. So how do we diagnose Merkel cell carcinoma? This is a microscopic diagnosis, requires biopsy and examination of the tissue under the microscope, but has a very, very classic appearance. Uh, we call these blue, small blue cell tumors. So they have features of neuroendocrine carcinomas, that is to say features of neural cells, as well as endocrine cells. Um, and so um, this is what they look like under the microscope. They have a particular unique staining pattern when you stain for cytokeratins, which are proteins that make up epithelial cells as well, such as keratinocytes. And that's shown here on the left is a routine stain section. Uh, and on the right, these are actually the tumor cells uh, uh, underneath the um, uh, epidermis of the skin into the, uh, uh, into the dermis, the deeper layers. And so that's what uh, Merkel cell carcinoma looks like uh, under the microscope. This is a very key point that I want to emphasize that correct diagnosis of this entity is really critical for uh, driving the understanding of prognosis and subsequent care. So having that correct diagnosis in, in, um, in hand is really important. So what's the prognosis? Um, Certainly when I was in medical school and um, residency, um, this was a, a curiosity. It was a rare disease, you know, as practitioners, unlikely to encounter this in, in everyday practice. But we learned about it because, uh, because it was uh, taught to us that this disease could be very, very aggressive. And indeed, that is the case, which is why we talk about it. But one thing I do want to emphasize is that there's a lot of recent data, including from our group here at Moffitt, suggesting that outcomes are much better than previously thought. So, you know, before this data, if you went on the web and you looked at some of the national database records looking at Merkel cell survival, uh, it would be very, very discouraging, uh, you know, that even localized disease uh, was associated with um, uh really dismal uh, survival statistics. So if you look at our data on the left here, uh, and then a follow-up study from the University of Washington um, group, you see actually that overall survival, this is sort of summarized down here on the table here, overall survival is uh, well over 70% for localized disease uh, and over 60% for disease that has involved uh, the lymph nodes. Now, the key point here is that this is overall survival. And you'll remember that I told you that Merkel cell carcinoma is overwhelmingly a disease of older individuals. I think part of this data reflects the fact that um, uh, once you're older, of course, you have a lot of competing ways to, uh, um, to achieve mortality, if you will. So uh, it's not always known whether or not these individuals actually died as a result of their disease specifically. And now we have much better numbers on that. And so you'll see that really the disease-specific survival when diagnosed with Merkel cell carcinoma is substantially better than we used to think. Now, coincident with that is, is, is that we've made a lot of progress in how to treat Merkel cell carcinoma as well. So I'm not going to, um, um, uh, I don't have to introduce immunotherapy as that was already very nicely done by uh, previous speakers. But um, to emphasize first that, you know, surgery really uh, remains the mainstay of therapy. Um, removal of the primary lesion is, of course, standard of care. And sentinel lymph node biopsy is now considered routine because, again, this disease does have the propensity to be, to be, to be aggressive. It's estimated that 30% um, uh, sentinel uh, node positivity rate um, is expected. So microscopic um, uh, nodal metastases uh, are, are um, that are not obvious when the patient is first examined. Um, uh, uh, one expects to find uh, uh, 
nodal metastases. So sentinel lymph node biopsy is considered um, appropriate and routine. Radiation therapy is often used postoperatively because this, this tumor type is known to be exquisitely radiosensitive um, and postoperative ra uh, radiation uh, can contribute positively to uh, longer term local control. So unresectable metastatic skin cancers respond very well to immunotherapy. Um, and I won't spend a lot of time on this, except to say that Merkel cell carcinoma is, is probably, um, might actually be the most responsive uh, skin cancer uh, to uh, systemic immunotherapy out there. Um, and this is actually a summary of the, the two um, uh, registrational trials that led to initial uh, FDA approval for Merkel cell carcinoma, uh, highlighting both pembrolizumab, which is anti-PD-1, and abelumab, which is an anti-PD-L1 uh, agent, targeting essentially the same uh, pathway. What's interesting here is that uh, immunotherapy response does not appear to be um, uh, linked to whether or not the Merkel cell carcinoma you have is virus positive or virus negative. An interesting biological note here is probably that um, viruses are really good, um, uh, make really good uh, foreign antigens that the immune system is really designed to respond to. And UV-driven cancers have really, really high mutation rates, which means they make a lot of mutated proteins, which also serve as really good targets for immuno for the immune system. So, um, uh, so I think there's still a lot to learn about how uh, immunotherapies uh, drive um, uh, uh, immune responses to Merkel cell carcinoma, but it does not appear to be virus positivity appears not to be a distinguishing factor in how individuals respond. Now, uh, the takeaway point here is that this is an individual, this is actually the picture of the same leg that I showed you earlier. This, um, this uh, woman uh, had her, um, her shins essentially uh, taken over by multiple nodules of Merkel cell carcinoma. And the picture on the right shows her leg after uh, two therapies of um, uh, two cycles of immunotherapy. Uh, really, um, one can observe really dramatic responses to um, uh, to this therapy. So really the message here is that even though this is a rare disease, even though it has the propensity to be behave aggressively, that ex effective uh, therapies exist. And one point uh, I'll make is that um, in probably the best study combination immunotherapy to date, which is uh, ipilimumab and nivolumab, when used first up front for patients that have never had immunotherapy before, recent clinical trial uh, uh, led by Sung Jun Kim here at um, uh, Moffitt Cancer Center shows that 100% upfront response rate, which is really remarkable. Um, however, um, if this combination is used, um, after initial failure of immunotherapy with single agent standard of care, single agent immunotherapy, that response rate drops to 30%. So gets back to the earlier points I made, getting the correct diagnosis and therefore getting to the correct therapy first, if that's what's needed, systemic immunotherapy is really, really critical because it works much less well if you use it second. So what can I do? So um, there are obviously risk factors you can't change, but there are a lot of things that you can change. So the way you practice sun protection and sun safety, avoidance of sunburns and indoor tanning, uh, and surveying your skin um, and seeking prompt attention for uh, suspicious lesions or things uh, lesions that expand rapidly, become symptomatic, itch, ulcerate. These are all reasons, reasons to seek uh, medical attention for, uh, for your skin. Luckily, a lot of the things that you can change are applicable uh, for preventing the car keratinocyte carcinomas that we talked about earlier today, as well as melanoma. And so that's illustrated here in my then 18-month-old, uh, exhibiting all the features of good sun protection and sun safety. So uh, keys to start young. It's never too late. 
wide brim hat, sun protective clothing, avoiding the midday sun. Notice the uh, very long shadow. This is a very short individual. Uh, and a, a assiduous use of sunscreen. So SPF 30 plus, I typically rec recommend zinc and titanium uh, uh, oxide containing uh, uh, sunscreens. They tend to be cosmetically not as not as pleasing, uh, but they are uh, less likely to be absorbed through the skin. Application and reapplication is key. Applying 30 minutes before anticipated exposure, reapplication every couple of hours, and reapplication uh, after every time you go in the water. And so important reminders, practice sun safety. It's good for everything we talked about today, including melanoma. When in doubt, go to a cancer center with experience in Merkel cell carcinoma. Getting that correct diagnosis is critical. Remember that effective therapies exist. Outcomes are not as dismal as we once thought. Uh, and immunotherapy is first-line therapy for advanced metastatic disease. So thank you so much for your attention, and I think we're going to be taking questions. So thank you.